Hey guys, it's Cubition here with a second tutorial in the LMS mixing series. Today we're going to be focusing on compression. So here I have the sound, the guinea pig, because I can't spell. It's just like the most simple pluck sound ever. Um, and we're going to compress it. So the idea is that you have a compressor. Usually compressors have knobs and they don't usually look like this and they're usually called compressors, but LMS is special. Um, and the idea is that you have this volume of the sound and the louder the volume is the more it goes along this axis in. So the louder the volume is the, the higher, the more right it goes here. But then you can change how loud it outputs that same volume. So what compressors have is they have something called a threshold which is where this point along the line is and we're going to put it really low like right here and they have something called a ratio. Now, um, a ratio of one half means that once it gets past that point, it'll multiply the volume by one half. So it gets so it's uh, half as loud as it would be once it's past that ratio. So that way, the the effect is really subtle here because the sound is not super loud coming into this effect so it isn't reaching that threshold however if I boost the heck out of it and then make it quiet in response you can hear that it's a little bit more clicky now that click comes from the attack because there's 10 seconds after it detects something before it kicks in um, if I turn this all the way down it, you really can't hear it. However, if I turn this up to 40 or something, you can really hear it has that like sharp attack to the sound. Now that's what compression is used a lot for is to increase the transient or that initial punch of something. And it's used a lot on drums. However, um, it's also used as something called a limiter. Whereas if something gets louder than a certain point, it prevents it from getting louder than that at all. So, this is usually put on like the songs in the mastering stage so that they get loud, but if they ever get to the point where they'll clip, it just lowers the volume so it doesn't clip. So I can turn the volume as much up as much as I want, but it'll never get louder than that. Now turning it up more increases that click because of the attack. But the sound never gets louder than that because the ratio is pretty much infinity. Infinity would be a straight line, but uh, it's hard to draw a straight line when you've got a cursor. So yeah, most compressors will do that automatically for you rather than you having to draw it. But the Nanox processor is a little bit more open-ended in the fact that you can do wacky stuff like this. completely weird but I'm pretty sure that there's a creative use for it you can make like a weird guitar sound with it I bet but yeah um, the general idea is that there's a threshold then a ratio and yeah attack and release release is how much the effect lingers after it leaves the threshold um, so when mastering you'll usually have this up higher so that you don't notice the effect as much um, but for other things you'll have it down a lot more now I'm going to apply this to the snare of the song here I'm going to play it real quick okay so we have that there um, I'm going to apply it to the snare if the editor will open. So I actually have a clap and a snare, so. So we're going to apply it to this. Um, just because this does weird things afterwards. I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to apply a dynamics processor. I'm going to set the ratio very, 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 I mean the threshold very, very low. And the threshold 
something pretty ridiculous. And now we're going to hear this effect. can hear that only the first little bit of the sound is normal volume and then the rest is very quiet. Now on compressors, this knob is usually called makeup gain or something to the effect of that. But in LMOS it's just output. Um, and you can increase the volume of it after to make up for the volume you're taking away. But that basically just makes that little bit that is normal volume louder than the rest. So you get more of a punchy sound. So. So you can hear that like that snare is like super fat compared to what it was before. So that can be used on any drum. Um, I use that on my kick drum a lot actually. So you can hear that that um, snare is super fat now. It can actually be used on a master channel. Here I'm going to throw it here um, to three, four, five, six, and then once it reaches that point, it's going to slowly make its way back to normal. Then I'm going to smooth the heck out of this because I feel like it. And now, I don't know why Elmos does this, but it's pretty dumb. It makes it so that this middle part here doesn't reach the bottom ever. So yeah, anyway, so master without the Dynamax processor. <laughs> So yeah, it's definitely boosting the sound and a little too much, I guess, because it's clipping despite this um, headroom that I tried to give it. But that's kind of what compressors are used for during the mastering stage is to bring everything up, but then at the same time, make it so that it never gets too loud. But yeah, um, I'm not super great at mastering as you can tell because I totally clipped it. But um, that's another use for compressors. Compressors are very versatile, and I use them on pretty much every single instrument, um, except for the sub bass maybe, because there's no point in compressing a note that, or an instrument that has no dynamic range anyway. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, I use it on the chords. Here, I do use it on the chords, and on this lead, I don't, I'm just distorting the lead. But usually I put a uh, compressor on everything. I'm actually compressing all the drums together. That's what the drums sound like without compression, but then when I compress the drums, And what I'm just doing here is I'm just having like a small like half a ratio of two thresholds pretty low. I wish it would tell you in decibels, but LMMS is special. Um, 35 and 25 for the attack and decay, um, or attack and release. And that's just basically like just really simple stuff. Then I have some makeup gain here in the form of an amplifier to make up for all that lost volume. And all in all, you get this great sounding little thing. Anyway, that's the basics of compression. I hope that was helpful to you. And if it was, please like and subscribe. I do keep these Elmamas tutorials coming. And yeah. Endings. Where is that stop button?
Hey guys, I'm Kibishin. I'm here today with a second tutorial. So, um, the concept of compression. The concept of compression is that you have a sound, um, that you have a sound, 